Hey friends, same 2012 Impala again today. Today we're doing the rear brake pads on this one. Now obviously you can see I took the wheels off already. If you still have the chrome caps on yours, then you need an eight, uh, 19 millimeter. If not, you need an 18 millimeter to get those off. Now, the brake caliber bolts, they're right in here. You got one right here and one slanted off down to the side underneath. Where'd it go? Where did it go? Where is it? Where is it? Right there. Oh, yeah, it's easy to see right there. Okay. So, yeah. Your brake caliber bolts go in there like that. They are a 13 millimeter. Of course, you just unbolt those. And what I do, of course, this is on the rotor then. And I just pry that off using my screwdriver. Where did I leave that? Okay. So, oh, there it is. So, yeah, I just go in behind there like that. And then, of course, pry it off. It lines up with that there so you put it in the behind there and you just pry it out these were actually sticking quite a bit now anyway you can see i've got this piece in here already now what it is is this piece of course well i'll just show you so i'll just show you now this kit right here is a disc brake caliper tool is what they call it now of course this this is to turn the caliper in which you have to do in this case and a lot of times you can see it just by looking at them you see it's got the little notches in there you can see the notches in the caliper see if I can point them out to you you see right in there those notches you see right there you got to find one of these that fits in there and I believe this one does. So, you use that. Let's see if I can't just do this here. So, you grab, it's kind of hard to do all this by myself. I don't have a brace or anything. You want the kids to help me, but anyhow. <laughs> so, first thing, kind of takes two hands. You put this one in here. Or the other way, I don't think it really matters in this case. You put that in there. And you screw that in place. And then... And then you pop this one in, the way we talked about. Anyhow, you fit it in there. And then you put your extension through here. It comes in the kit. And then you have to tighten and turn this one in at the same time or it will not compress. Now, I already started, so it probably, it might even turn by itself as I go here. Nope, so I turn it. Make sure it's seated properly. There we go. It loosens up loosens up and you tighten it up you push that caliper back in otherwise you will not be able to put your new brake pads in and actually still get it on the rotor so you make sure you compress it all the way here let me take a better look there Anyway, here you can see it's compressed all the way. So, you take your tool off. And of course, getting your old brake pads out is easy. These weren't even completely shot yet. They weren't great by any means, but they weren't completely shot yet. I got ceramics. You can get them cheap online. I'm in Canada as well, so sometimes it makes a difference. So you see these little junky pieces in there. I hate those crats so much. Ugh. Want to make sure they're fit right where they should be, or you might have a pain of a time getting those things back in place, the new pads. 
So let me do that real quick. And then you fit your new pads in place as well as you can. One, one of them has an indicator on it, as you can see there, that just lets you know when the pad's down to a certain amount. So, let me fit them in place. And then, once you have the stupid pads in place, I actually, one of these is all bent up and stuff. I actually just ended up taking it out. I know somebody's going to tell me that my life is at risk now, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. 350,000 miles on it. I can always change it later if I have a problem. Getting it on can be a pain sometimes. You just obviously got to make sure it lines up down there and then get it on here. And, of course, once you got it on there, it's a pain in the butt to get it on there. Especially this one. I don't think I've ever had brakes that were as hard to do as these were. But anyway, once you've got it on there, I actually ended up having to hit it with a hammer to get it on. But uh, it works. You tighten the first one. Make sure the bottom one lines up even if you have to tap it a couple of times. And, uh, yeah, tighten everything back up. Now, I'm a bit of an idiot today. I didn't feel like putting jack stands under there. I'm in a bit of a hurry anyway. Of course, if I die, that rush isn't going to be worth much, is it? Uh, you don't need to tighten the crap out of it. Just uh, nice and tight. I don't know how strong you are, but there we go. And I didn't have any luck spinning these, of course, with the new ones on. You'll probably have to let them spin free. Now, while you're under here, the way I always do is check everything. A friend of mine used this car, so it's very dirty. But uh, anyway, so there's my sway bar link there. Feels all right. And... Might as well check your bushings. They just go way up there, of course. The same on the other side. Looks good. No ball joints or anything back here, luckily. I'm actually going to borrow my camera for this because I can't look behind there. No, that looks all right. Good stuff. I think we just put new struts on this one. Oh, yeah, we did. You can see it right there. Prime choice. So yeah, I just put struts on this one a few months ago. And if you're curious about that, same concept as I mentioned in one of my other videos. A couple of bolts on the top, underneath, it's very easy to get at. And then just a wrench for these because they're rounded. As you can see, they've got a flat edge. And then two there, two there. You got to take that one off. They're a pain sometimes. But again, just use a wire brush and you might have to hold on to it. Usually they have a way whether it's behind here. Or a hex or an allen in the middle or something they got a way to hold on to them but they're not super hard to change you access them through the trunk you just pop the trunk and pull the pull the fender liner back or the, the trunk liner back and then they're pretty easy to get at but anyhow that's basically it all i'm going to do now is put the wheels back on i always put a little bit of uh, lubricant on the threads just to make sure and actually i put Sometimes I'll put some grease on there, but this is handy. And again, 350,000 miles on this car. I'm gonna keep going. Maintain them well and they last. Hope this video helps somebody out. I know I wasn't very informative, but anyhow, it's not very complicated. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Your sway bar bushings are up there, by the way. I didn't even look at those earlier. But again, hope this helps somebody out and God bless.